Okay, so today in the exploration you did, you learned about nth roots, radical expressions, and fractional exponents. So this is kind of just a recap uh, in case you didn't quite get it all. So an nth root, we know that if, let me turn on my thing, b to the n equals a, then the nth root of a is equal to b. That's our definition of a, a radical. The radical is the symbol here. And um, it can be any power. So we could be talking about the fifth power, the sixth power, the sixth root, the seventh root. Uh, we will talk about what you are expected to memorize. All right, let's see. So for example, if I have the fifth root of 32, this means what to the fifth power, so b to the fifth power equals 32. So you're gonna have to know your powers and this is equal to two, because two to the fifth equals 32. Example two, find the indicate, indicated real nth root of a. So it's the cube root of negative 27. Well, our odd roots can be negative because um, a negative to an odd power ends up being negative. So the cube root of negative 27 is negative three because negative three to the third power is negative 27. Now this chapter we don't deal in imaginary numbers, so we're not going to do um, negatives uh, of even roots. So we're back into the real realm of real numbers here. How about the fourth root of 256? Well, 256 is 16 times 16, 16 times 16, and 16 is 4 times 4. So we have 4 to the 4th power equals 256. So the 4th root of 256 is equal to 4. Now the book is going to start and ask you, find the here we go, indicated indicated uh, real nth root of a. So we have the first example, it's going to say n equals 5 and a equals negative 243. So we want the fifth root of negative 243. And this is 40, uh, 243 is I believe 9 times 27 and that's 3 times 3 and that's 3 times 3 times 3 so we get um, negative 3 <coughs> that root number 2 n equals 8 the eighth root of 256 well we set up here that 256 was 4 to the 4th power, and we can break the 4 into 2's. So 2 to the 8th was equal to 256, so the 8th root of 256 equals 2. So let's make a little chart here. We have n. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. n squared. So we're going to square all these. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. You know this list. 64, 81, and 100. Then n cubed is 1, 8. Now we're multiplying the n squared by that number again, so 9 times 3, 27. 
64, 125, 216, 343, 512, 729, and 1,000. And to the fourth is 1, 16, 81, 256, 625, 1296, 7 to the fourth is 2401, 8 to the fourth is 4096, 9 to the fourth, 6561, and 10,000. And to the fifth, 1, 32, 243, 4 to the 5th is 1, or 1024, 1024. Now, on some calculators, you're going to have a button, if you're using your cell phone, it looks like X to the Y. So you put in the uh, 5, and you press the X to the Y button, and then we push the power we want, so 5 to the 5th. is 31.25. Other calculators have a button that looks like this. If you're using like the TI calculators, like the pink ones I have, you would do the five, the caret button, this is your power button, to the fifth. Um, and then we'll talk about how to do the roots. So six to the fifth oops, is 7,776. 7, 8 to the 5th is 32,768. You're not going to have to really memorize all of these, but I'm going to stop there. This is 100,000. The 6th power, 164, 243 times 3, 729, 1024 times 4. 4096 and 5 to the 6th is 15,625. And the only 7th power you're really probably going to be asked for is 2 to the 7th. Okay. So it helps to know these. Uh, we definitely want you to know all of your 2nd power, 3rd power. Your 4th power, you're pretty safe going up to 6. And your 5th power, if you memorize up to 4 to the 5th, um, your 6th power to the 3, and then your 7th power, knowing 7, uh, 2 to the 7th. So this is kind of a little reference that can help you um, figure out the answers quicker. And the more you have these memorized, the faster this is all going to go. And it also comes in handy in the next chapter as well, because we're going to be working with the same powers, but a little bit differently. Okay, so... If you need to reference this, write it down in your notes. So, you also looked at fractional exponents in, um, in the exploration. So we have that nth roots can also be written as fractional powers. So nth roots as fractional powers. So the square root of a, remember we don't write the two with square root, it's our basic one, is the same as a to the one half power. The cube root of a is a to the one third power. The fourth root of a, can you guess? a to the one fourth power. The fifth root of a is a to the one fifth. So the nth root of a is a to the one over n. Now, if you're raising that to any power, so say we have the cube root of a squared, this is a to the one third power squared, and to multiply fractions, we multiply 
by 2 over 1, and we get a to the 2 thirds. So we see that the exponent becomes the numerator. And the root becomes our denominator. So the general form is n the root of a to the m power is a to the m over n. So if I wanted to evaluate, say, 16 to the 1 half power, this is the same root of the same as the square root of 16. So the square root of 16 is equal to 4. If I wanted to evaluate um, 8 to the 2 thirds power, this is asking me, what is the cube root of 8 squared? And the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Number 3, um, 625 to the 1 fourth power. That's the fourth root of 625. And that equals 5. We have uh, example 4, negative 125 to the 4 thirds power. That's the same as the cube root of negative 125 to the 4th power. The cube root of negative 125 is negative 5. Why is my pencil not working? And negative 5 to the 4th power negatives to an even power positive, and 5 to the 4th power is 625, so positive 625. So that's how you evaluate them without a calculator. And you can use that list that we just made on the last slide, so you can kind of reference that and get good at multiplying those. There will be parts of this quiz and test that you will not be able to use a calculator for. And there will be parts that you will be able to use a calculator for. So when we're asked to evaluate with a calculator, mm -hmm. to evaluate, we have to talk about different ways to use a calculator. So what if it asks for 7 to the 1 fourth power? So in your calculator, if you're using the uh, cell phone calculator, which of course you're not allowed to use on a test, so you need to get a scientific calculator and you need to get com um, comfortable with it. You're going to again use the button that has a little caret and you'll do 7 caret and then in parentheses you do 1 divided by 4. And that gives us, hold on, get my calculator working here, 7 to the 1 fourth power. Uh, approximately, we use the wavy um, equal sign, 1.62, and I'm going to round uh, 7. Um, you could also make that a decimal, so you go 7 to the 0.25, if you know the decimal right away, that helps as well. If you're in the other calculators, it's 7, um, the X to the Y button, that's the cell phone, I'm sorry, these, these ones are for your TI calculator, the pink ones I have on, on my desk. Um, the cell phone is X to the Y button. You may have something similar, Y to the X, if you have a Casio. And then um, you have to actually hit the parentheses. Let's make sure this works. 7, parentheses, 1 divided by 4, close the parentheses, and then hit Enter. So 1 divided by 4, close the parentheses, and then hit equals. And that can, will give you the answer. Uh, same thing, 1.672. Um, let's see, 10 to the 2 fifths power. So again, we're going 10, the caret button. Same is true on a graphing calculator. And then parentheses, 2 divided by 5 or in the cell phone calculator, the X to the Y button, and it's parentheses two divided by five, close parentheses equal. So 10 to 
to the parentheses, 2 divided by 5, close the parentheses, and I get, and I have to equal, because when I close the parentheses, it does 2 divided by 5 for me, 2.512, approximately. Um, and then what about the roots? If it's asking us in a calculator to do the cube root of 11 squared. So in the calculators, this is where it gets really different. If you're using a cell phone calculator, you're going to actually put the 11 in first. And then you're going to hit second, or no, in the cell phone, it's actually its own button, Y radical X. And then you tell it 3. So 11 Y radical X 3 gives me 2.224. That's approximately. And then I'm going to raise that X to the Y and hit 2. So X to the Y squared. And that's approximately didn't want to write. The heck? Approximately 4.946. In the other calculators, you're actually going to hit the 3 first. If you are using the, the TI calculators, you're going to hit 3. And then second, you should notice above the caret button, it's going to say, um, it's either X radical Y, I think it's X radical Y. And then you'll put the 11, and then I would hit equals, and then take that answer, 2.224, and then raise it to the second power, and that'll give you 4.946. And if you have any other questions about specific calculators, look for those buttons, the radicals. They're there. It might be a second function on your, um, on your power button. And the last thing you're going to have to do in the homework tonight is rewrite radicals as a fraction. Fractional exponent. Excuse my messy writing. Um, so, for example, 3 radical t to the 4th, that is t to the 4, the exponent stays on top, the, ra the root goes on the bottom, so t to the 4 thirds power. And the 5th root of m to the negative 2, that's going to be m to the negative 2 over 5. And let's remember that a negative exponent means 1 over m to the 2 fifths. The negative exponent means reciprocal, so it, be go, it goes into the denominator. Um, the fourth root of f squared could be f to the 2 fourths power. The exponent, even though it's inside the radical, will still go on top, and that can actually be reduced to f to the 1 half. And then we can go the other way around and write fractional exponents as radicals. So rewrite fractional exponents as radicals. So we have, say, 16, oh, let's say, x to the 4 fifths power. So that is uh, the fifth root. The denominator becomes the root of x, all raised to the numerator fourth power. If I have a to the negative four ninths, that's the ninth root of a. The denominator becomes the root. The denominator goes there. And then my numerator becomes my exponent on the outside. And then let's do last one. m to the five halves power. This would be the square root of m. When we do a square root, we don't write the 2. It's the only one we don't write the 2m. Just like we don't write 1m or m to the first power with the square root, we don't write the 2. So the square root of m to the fifth. And that's how we write fractional exponents as radicals. Okay, I hope this cleared anything up if you were struggling with the exploration today.